Hey everybody, today we're going to be making a procedural pile of leaves in Geometry Nodes. You can control the density of the pile, the height of the pile, all procedurally. So let's jump straight into it. Let's first of all clear our scene and make a new Geometry Nodes. And let's just make a new object, so Mesh Cube. And this I'm just going to rename to Leaf Pile. Let's just create a new Geometry Nodes setup here. So straight away, let's just disconnect the group input. We'll use that a bit later on. And basically, let's just break this down. So we're trying to make a pile of leaves. And the quickest way to get this sort of shape would be to have an entire sphere and just chop it off in the middle. So how do we do that? Well, first off, let's put in a UV sphere. So mesh primitives, UV sphere. Let's connect that up to the output. And from here, we basically want to figure out how to uh, chop this in half and quickest way to do that that I found is to first of all make some instances on this sphere that we can put the leaves onto. So let's go shift a mesh to points. Let's just plug that in here. So now we have a UV sphere. If we play with the segments and the rings you can see we're basically creating points that we can instance objects onto which is going to be the leaf. But we do want to control the scale of this so how tall it can be and how shallow the pile can be. So to do that, we just simply need a transform node. So shift A, transform, and we can plug that in between UV sphere and mesh to points. And now we have this scale, which allows us to play with the scale of the sphere. So when we bring it up on the Z axis, we can get a really large leaf pile. When we bring it down, we can get a really shallow leaf pile. So now that we have all that set up, we actually need to chop this guy in half. And to do that, the quickest way I found is to use a texture and we're going to be using the gradient texture. So place that down and grab the factor and plug that into the selection of the mesh to points. So immediately you can see we've chopped it in half, but it's on the wrong axis. We need it to be bottom to top. So obviously to do that, we need to play with some vector math and it's actually pretty easy. So first off, we need to find the position of this object. So if we type in position, place this down here, and plug this into the vector straight away nothing's happening because we haven't actually defined what position of the vector we're trying to place the gradient onto so basically to do that we need to separate xyz so let's go shift a search separate xyz and straight away so basically we're plugging the position of the uv sphere into the xyz coordinates so we've got X here, this red line, we've got Y, this green line, and then we have Z, which is kind of invisible, but it's the in-between up and down. And that's what we're trying to tell the gradient texture to do, go from bottom to top. So what we can do is plug in, instead of X, we can move this over to Z, into the vector. And now you can see we have a perfectly round leaf pile here that we can start instancing our object onto. Awesome, so this is basically everything done for the leaf pile. Now we need to move on to instancing the leaf onto it and then we'll start making it procedural. So let's just move all of our stuff here a little bit closer just to clean it up. I'm going to select everything and press Control J to put it into a frame. That way it's a little bit more organized and you can actually name this in the properties tab. So if you press N you can open up the, the properties and click on node and if you have your frame selected you can just change this to be leaf pile. So that way you kind of don't get lost and you can also give it some color as well. So let's just go kind of green. Cool. So now let's make the instances pretty simple to do. Let's go shift day instance on points. Let's just drop that in between. Now straight away, everything is going to disappear because there's nothing being instanced currently. So we need to plug something into this object here. So if we plugged in a mesh primitive cube to the instance and we scaled this down, you'll see we have a bunch of cubes all instanced on this sphere. Now if we play with the rings and the segments, you can see like we can have a super dense thing of cubes or a super light thing of cubes. Cool, but we don't want cubes, we want actually a leaf. So I actually have a leaf model that I've just downloaded offline. This one here, super low res and it's just, it makes it look a lot nicer. You're definitely more than welcome to model your own leaf, but just for speed's sake, I'm going to just use this leaf model, but the, the operation will be the same for your own model that you create. So to actually get your model from the outliner or from your 3D scene into geometry nodes, you basically just drag and drop it in. 
and then it creates a little object info node for you. So this object info is all the information about this leaf. So what we can do is just grab the geometry of it and plug that into the instance. So if we scale this down, you'll see it's like the same model over and over again, repeating, and it looks really unrealistic. So we need to play with the scale and the rotation, and you could manually play around with it here, but the quickest way to do this is just by using a random value. So random value, let's plug, change this from float to vector, and let's just plug this into rotation, and I'm going to duplicate it and also plug it into the scale. So straight away you can kind of see what's happening. We need to play with the minimum scale and the maximum scale, and also the minimum rotation and the maximum rotation. So let's just start off with the scale first. So I'm going to set this to 0.01 scale. So the minimum is 0.01 and the maximum I'm going to set to 0.1. So now you can see all the leaves look a little more natural now. Uh, but now we need to change the rotation. So for the rotation, I just went with something chaotic. So let's just go like take negative one to positive one. And you can see already it's looking a lot more natural, but obviously there isn't enough segments. So if we increase this, you'll see we get a pretty realistic looking pile of leaves, especially if you're looking far away. So that is basically everything we need to do, but to actually make this procedural, so you don't have to manually jump in and play with all these individual sliders, we use this group input node. So anything that you plug into here, let's say segments, you'll see it popped up here in the modify tab. So now you can actually procedurally animate this on the fly without actually having to jump into geometry nodes. So what we want to do is actually make this segments hook up to segments and rings. And we also want to connect this to the same one. So segments to radius, uh, but straight away, you'll see everything's disappeared. And that's because currently we've set the radius to 122 meters, which is massive. So we need to somehow make it so that we can scale everything at the same time without making a huge radius, which is actually super simple. We basically just need to put in a math node. So shift A, math, and let's connect. Let's just pop this on the radius line here. And we just want to make it so that whatever number we have in here, it's divided by a number that we set here. So let's divide this and just scale this up and you can kind of see what's happening already. If we set this to like 100. You'll see as we play with the segments, it's now working exactly as we would like. So the segments are being set to 60 and the rings are being set to 60 and the, the radius is set to 60, but then it's divided by 100. So it's not this crazy massive radius. Cool. Now to actually set this, instead of instead of it saying segments, we can actually make it say anything else we want. So if we go to group here and we click on segments, we can change the name to something like leaf size slash density. And now you can see here, it's a lot more user friendly and you actually know what you're changing when you play with this slider. Awesome, so the very last thing we need to do now is make it so we can alter how tall he is and how sh shallow it is and basically make it look more like a leaf pile procedurally. Very simple. Same thing, just grab this other input here and plug that into the scale transform. So now you'll see we have the scale XYZ and what we can do is play with the Z scale and make it either a very shallow leaf pile or make it a super tall leaf pile. Again, you can actually change this so you can, instead of it being named scale, you can just name this height. All right, so now you have a fully procedural leaf pile that you can play with the height of, the size and the density, all procedurally inside of geometry nodes. Thanks for watching.